Hi everyone, it's Olivia. Today we are in the studio and we are going to be doing a Q&A while doing a studio cleanup. Right now it is a mess in the studio. It's always a mess after any big event or a large print job or a bunch of small print jobs. It's, it's a mess after any print job really. So I just want to mention that this situation is not representative of all Rezo Studios. This particular studio happens to be very small and home-based and usually run by just one person, which is myself. And also we don't have a storefront and we're not open to the public. And so I don't always have the time, motivation or incentive to keep it super clean. So we're going to be doing some of that today. And at the same time, I'm also going to be answering some questions that I've been getting on this channel and also via email. So I can't always respond to all the questions and emails that I get and some of them are repetitive so I figure it would be nice to just address some of them here right now. But before we get started, I do want to mention two very important things. The first is that this video is not sponsored so all thoughts and opinions are my own. And the second is that I will be presenting information based on my very limited experience printing from this one machine. So note that everything I say is not definitive, it's not gospel. I encourage you to seek out information from other resources, but I will try my best to present what I do know to the best of my ability and knowledge. Alright everyone, so let's get started. First of all, I would like to wish all of you a wonderful, joyful, peaceful, and safe season of celebration as well as a happy new year. And second of all, if you hear some construction sounds in the background, I'd like to apologize for that. I think someone is doing some construction in the apartment upstairs. All right, so this is just going to be a pretty casual conversation where I attempt to answer some questions that I've been asked multiple times, either through this YouTube channel or via email to the Pin.Press Press email address. And Pin.Press Press is the Resograph Studio that we run here. So how it's going to work is that this is going to be a split screen situation where if you get tired of looking at this situation over here, you can always just look one screen over and check out how the studio cleaning is going. All right, so one of the questions I get asked the most is to talk about Resograph machine models. Specifically, what model do we run in the studio as well as do I have any insight or recommendations for any Resograph model? And that is a very difficult question for me to answer at length because number Number one, it's a very general question with a lot of factors to consider. And second, I am not a Resograph salesperson, so I am not well versed in all of the specifications for all the different models that are available. So asking me that question to make an analogy is kind of like asking me what car to drive. Just because I drive a 10 year old Mazda 3 GX does not mean that that is the car that you should drive. So yeah, the question of what Resograph machine model to settle on really depends on you. It depends on factors such as what your budget is, what you're willing to spend money on, what capabilities and specifications you need for the particular jobs that you're looking to do, as well as what's available and what you can compromise on. So it's really very similar to buying a car. The model that we have in the studio is the MZ1090. So I repeat, it is the MZ1090 and it is a discontinued model. And what that means is that Rezo no longer makes this particular model. However, Rezo still does make digital duplicators. They've just upgraded the machines into a different model number slash series. So if you go into the Rezo website, you can go into the digital duplicator section and you can check out what the latest model numbers and series are. And I presume that these machines also have been upgraded into more advanced capabilities and technologies. And that's another thing I'd like to clarify. When we're talking about Rezo machines, what we're actually talking about, I presume, is the digital duplicator. So Rezo is the most popular manufacturer of the duplicators because they invented this technology, although they're not the only brand that makes it. But what we have in the studio is a Rezo brand digital duplicator, and also that is the brand that I know a lot of creative studios also use. 
A website that I'd like to recommend if you'd like to learn more about machines is the stencil.wiki website. And if you go to this section called machines, you can see that they have a pretty extensive listing of a bunch of different models. And here's the one that we have in the studio, the MZ1090, and there's some basic information as well on the site, such as the fact that it can print ledger at 600 dpi with two colors running at the same time, and that it has a discontinued status. So what I would like to recommend is if you are interested in learning about different Rezo machine models as well as what is available in your area, is to contact your local printing equipment dealer that is an authorized Rezo reseller because my understanding is that at least in the North American market and it's probably the same as well for other regions is that Rezo does not sell to consumers directly so you can't just go on the Rezo website add a machine on the cart check that out and then have that shipped to your house Rezo actually partners with authorized resellers to sell this equipment and so it's just like if you want to buy a Honda you can't just buy it straight from the Honda manufacturer you have to go through a dealer to do it so it is with the Rezo and just like when you go to a car dealership where you get to test drive different models and it's the salesperson's job to really sell you on a car based on your needs so it is when you go to a printing equipment dealer it would be the salesperson's job to show you what all the different models are explain to you how they're all different in terms of specifications probably show you some print samples from the different models, do some test runs, answer your questions, and also even educate you on the basics of the operation of the machine. And if you're gonna need service for your machine in the future, as I think you probably will, I know that our machine here has broken down a few times and we've had to ask a Rezo tech to come over and service it. As well as if you think you're gonna need a resource for supplies and consumables, then a Rezo dealer can help you with that. And you should definitely ask the dealer about it as well as about warranty and other terms. Although you're not obligated to get those things from the dealer that originally sold you your equipment to begin with, the chance of finding a qualified, certified, and trained Rezo tech that can service your particular machine is a little bit higher with the dealer compared to wherever else because Rezo techs are a bit more rare owing to the fact that there are just fewer Rezos out there than there are laser machines. So yeah, just some things to consider and think about. Uh, definitely don't feel pressured or rushed into making any particular decisions at once. Definitely take your time. So to talk a bit about the machine that Pindot Press runs in the studio, we have the MZ1090. And we ultimately settled on this machine because we wanted the option of being able to print at the larger tabloid size, as well as being able to print two colors at once. And the reason for that is because we work with a lot of artists and creatives. And being one myself, I know that we would like the option of being able to print at the larger size, as well as pile on the color. So although we've done zines and prints at one color, the majority have been two color end up. And at that time, this is the machine that was available. And at this point, I would like to give a shout out and thank the salesperson who was able to find this machine for us because this machine at that time was already on its way out to being discontinued. And so our wonderful salesperson found a lightly used model for us to purchase. And so at that point, it was just a matter of opportunity meeting needs. So that's how we ended up with this machine. And if you're wondering if I think you can print multiple colors using a one drum slash one color machine, I think you can. You just have to run the paper through the machine more times. And you have to be also more wary of track marks and registration. And also note that the process is going to take longer. So with a two color machine, you can just run the paper through the machine once and automatically print two colors on that piece of paper versus if you are running it on a one color machine you have to run the paper through once for one color layer and then let that layer dry and also change over your ink cylinders and then afterwards put that paper through the machine again for the second color and then let that dry so let's talk about Rezo consumables which are the supplies that you need to put into the machine to make prints 
So the first is the Rizzo Master, and they come in these rolls. And this is that thin rice papery sheet of material that is used to create stencils. And the second is the ink tube, and they look like this. And the ink is made of either soybean oil or rice bran oil. And so these are the consumables or supplies that you're going to run out of and would need to constantly buy in order to keep printing. So now that we've talked about supplies, let's talk about the next few questions. And these are from Prathamesh Sonar who asks, do we have to get a separate drum for each color? What is cost of printing a thousand pages? How many pages per ink cartridge? Too many questions, but please reply. All right, so for the first question, do we have to get a separate drum for each color? The answer is more likely yes than no. And the reason for that is because once you put a particular ink color into an ink cylinder and start running that color, that ink is gonna be all over that ink cylinder. So if you want to convert that into a different color, you're gonna have to either clean the ink cylinder, which is very time-consuming, intensive, and quite a messy process, or you're just gonna have to put in the new ink tube and then print a lot of pages until the old ink has been used up and the new ink starts showing up. And so that might take a while. That might take hundreds, if not thousands, of sheets of paper to get to that point. So yeah, changing colors is very inefficient. So if, for example, you're an art printer and you need to be able to print a lot of different colors very efficiently, then it makes more sense to just dedicate an ink cylinder to one particular color. However, if, for example, you have an ink cylinder with a color that you wish to retire because you're just not using that color that much anymore and you want to change it semi-permanently, then you can go ahead and change over an ink cylinder into a different color. But again, it depends on what you're gonna be using it for. If you do need to change over colors, it's not a very efficient process to just keep doing that on one ink cylinder. As for the next question of what is cost of printing a thousand pages and how many pages per ink cartridge, this is not something that I can answer because the question of cost is a very local question. So it depends on your region and what the supplies there cost, labor, maintenance, utilities, rent, all of these things that go into the cost of a business and the pricing of a product. And also, as I mentioned earlier, I am not a Rizzo salesperson, so I don't have access to all of this information, such as what supplies cost in any particular region. So I'd like to draw the distinction in cost for a commercial printer versus a small, independently run art printing press like what we have here. So if you are a commercial printer and for example you're doing a job, let's say for the government, and it's one form, one design, one color on very cheap paper, and you're running thousands and thousands of copies of that one thing, versus if you are an art printer and you're doing a five color art print that is printed on really expensive fancy stock, and you're doing a very limited run of 50 copies, the cost per print for the commercial printer will be significantly less than the cost per print for the art printer. And also the cost for the commercial printer will be easier to predict and more consistent than it will be for the art printer. So if you are a commercial printer and you are doing these kinds of jobs, you can probably go to a sales dealer and ask them to give you a ballpark of what the cost per print will be in your region. And they probably run those tests. So that is something that I personally haven't tried myself and it's also for what we are doing in the studio, that's not something that we can give to you and also something we can predict. So one thing that I can say that I have noticed is that the larger the surface area of ink coverage, the faster you're gonna use up your ink. So let's say you're a commercial printer and you're printing a form with a lot of text and a lot of white space. You're gonna use up your ink a little bit slower than an art printer that is printing an art print with a huge area that is solid color. Another thing to consider is that if you remember from the All About Rizzo tutorial, regardless of how small or how large the surface area is that you need to print, the whole master stencil still gets inked up. So imagine if you're creating an art print and it has 
five small dots of different colors on it. You still have to burn five masters for those five different colors and then ink up those whole masters. So then you might end up using more ink as well faster. So to sum it all up, imagine if you are printing a hundred copies of just one design using just one master, the per print price of those prints will be less than if you are printing a hundred copies of all different designs each and you're burning a hundred masters for those designs. So costing and pricing is definitely a challenge for an art printing press. For example, you can have someone who wants to print a very minimalist piece that uses very little ink but then they want the really expensive paper and they only want to do a small run. Or you can have someone that has art that uses up a lot of ink and they want it on cheaper paper and they want to do a larger run. So there are a lot of factors to consider when you're thinking about your costs and your prices. All right, so that's it for this Q&A. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your questions. I hope that even though I wasn't able to answer some of them directly, that I was at least able to explain why and to give a more nuanced and thoughtful response. If you have a question for me, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give it a like or possibly even subscribe. So yeah, for 2020, I do have a goal of upping my upload game and I want to upload more varied content. So not just Rezo tutorials and zine tutorials, but also videos about painting, drawing, and sketching because I really enjoy those things. And also I really need to upload some videos for my flower reference library series. So yeah, looking forward to a productive 2020. Thank you again so much. If you're a subscriber, thank you so much for your support throughout 2019. And I will see you in the next video. everyone so we're gonna do a little bit of Christmas shopping the first place we're gonna go to is square one in Mississauga square one is a really huge mall all right let's check out the Apple store whoa it's packed and uh, let's head over this way and that's the line to get into lululemon so we're here for Muji which has the best stationery ever and it's right next to Aritzia And they have a bunch of stationery here and some pens. So I think I ended up with some planners and some notebooks and a couple pens and I think we're good. So I had spent some time sewing some zippered pouches. I am not really the best sewer so I am not going to do any kind of sewing tutorial or anything but I did combine a few different tutorials to create the pouches that I wanted exactly. So these pouches, for example, they don't have a bottom seam because I wanted to maximize the use of the fabrics. And I also lined them with artist canvas. And that is because I will be shopping for some stationery and art supplies and sketching supplies and putting them into the pouches. And I figure Artist Canvas will do very well for storing art supplies because it's art canvas and it's pretty tough and it's pretty rigid. And yeah, it should be very sturdy as well. So yeah, the plan is to put the art supplies in them and then gift them to some people that have really been special to me in my life this past year.